I'm on a mission to learn all about self-driving vehicles, also called autonomous vehicles or even AI-driven cars. And you are invited along for the ride. And you may have seen videos about this technology. Meet George Jetson. Not quite like that, more like this. Self-driving cars without safety drivers behind the wheel have flooded San Francisco streets. And sometimes things go wrong. Now watch as the officer steps away. The car appears to drive off. There have been 75 plus incidents. And so to me, it's like playing Russian roulette. And lots of things go right as well. So how do these self-driving cars actually drive? I mean, of course they have wheels, but what about the brain? There's no one sitting at the steering wheel, just a computer system and sensors. Lots of sensors, dozens of sensors. The sensors are pretty interesting with three different kinds. Taking one look at the cars, it's clear there's something different. There's that entire dome on top. And then there are sensor arrays on every corner of the vehicle. Clearly these are not there for decoration or aerodynamics. There are at least 39 sensors looking outside the car. Plus, there are cameras inside the vehicle. Is this like having three dozen eyes? Now there's three different types of sensors. First, the cameras. Have you seen some of these new phones? You know, the ones that seem like they have more cameras than could ever be needed. Well, Waymo took that to a whole nother level with 29 cameras total outside the vehicle. They're all over it. It creates a 360 degree view to identify all sorts of things like traffic signals, construction zones, other vehicles, obstacles in the road, and more. Now, an interesting note, you might have heard that Tesla has autopilot capabilities. It's my understanding that Tesla only uses cameras on their vehicles as sensors for this. Waymo, however, did not stop with cameras. There are two other types of sensors used. Next, we have LiDAR. You might not have heard of LiDAR before. It's a technology that first came out in the 1960s and has developed extensively since then. LiDAR is an acronym for Light Detecting and Ranging. It creates a 3D picture of everything around it using rapid laser pulses. And when I say rapid, I mean crazy fast, like tens of thousands of pulses per second. Those laser pulses reflect off everything to create a 3D model of the world around even in the dark. It's a technology that's used in so many different ways. It's used in everything from construction to map out existing buildings or locations, to archeology span to fly over the jungle and detect buildings from long ago that are covered with vegetation and might be very difficult to reach. It's used in places like agriculture, mining, security, and lots more. You might've even had it used against you if a police officer used a handheld LiDAR speed gun to find out that you were speeding. Now there are four LiDAR sensors on the Waymo vehicle. Third, radar. You've probably heard of radar before. The first thing that may come to mind is a weather radar map. Waymo has six different radar units that provide information, but it's not for the weather forecast displayed inside the vehicle. It's all about the direction and speed of things around the vehicle. You know, in the movies, radar is shown to detect the torpedo coming into the boat. With Waymo, it's used to track so many things. And it's also notable that these work well in all sorts of weather conditions, including rain, fog, and snow. Now, as a bonus, there are also eight ultrasonic sensors in the vehicle bumpers for front and rear obstacle avoidance. These are pretty common in modern vehicles. If your vehicle provides a warning that you're backing into something, it's likely from an ultrasonic sensor like this. Waymo doesn't really seem to tout this as part of their technology, probably because it's already used in mass market vehicles. Wow, that's a lot of sensors, but what if they get dirty? Well, apparently, according to Waymo, there are innovative cleaning tools like wipers and nozzles to ensure a driver can always see through any condition. And thanks to Reddit user walkie22talkie, there's even this video supposedly showing the cleaning of bird poop off a sensor. I'd like to know if this is real. If anyone's seen this, please comment or share a video. And with all those sensors, Waymo even drives at night. That might even leave you asking, will one of these things be driving through my neighborhood soon? Nah, not really, unless you live in a specific geographical area. Waymo is currently operating at level four automation, but what does that even mean? Level four? The Society of Automotive Engineers has published a standard of driving automation. It's SAEJ3016 for those nerds out there that want a little light reading. 
Now, count closely because there seems to be a trick in the standard. Level zero provides momentary warnings or assistance like automated emergency braking or warning about blind spots or departing out of your lane. Level one actually has a little steering control, braking or acceleration. Think about lane centering or adaptive cruise control that adjusts the speed of your vehicle as the vehicles in front slow or accelerate. Level two sounds the same as level one, except for an important difference. It provides steering and braking or acceleration control at the same time. Level three is getting to the autonomous driving mode, except that a driver must be in the driver's seat and take control at the vehicle requests. On the surface, I thought this sounds like what Tesla does, but it turns out that Tesla's so-called autopilot driver is actually level two. Even Tesla admits this on their website in a January 2024 article stating, autopilot features including traffic aware cruise control and auto steer are SAE level two driver assist systems. For every Tesla being produced right now, uh, the Model 3, the Model S, the Model X has, has all of the hardware necessary for full autonomy. Sorry, Elon, that was 2016 and we're in 2024, but Tesla's not there yet. However, Mercedes beat Tesla to the punch by selling the first level three autonomous vehicle in the United States. You know, it's currently only available for purchase in California and Nevada. And being Mercedes, if you have the money to afford one. Level four, this is getting really interesting. This is where Waymo is at. It's fully autonomous driving that does not require a driver to take control of the car at any time. However, it's also geofenced. It's restricted to a defined geographical area. Level five is the holy grail of autonomous driving. It's what the future dreams of. Fully autonomous driving in all conditions and all locations. The AI is truly in control and can take you anywhere. If you've been keeping count, we got up to level five, but Somehow, there's actually six levels. If anyone out there knows why they started at zero instead of one, drop a comment below. I'm kind of curious. So Waymo is at level four. Remember, that's where the vehicle computer system is fully in control within a defined geographic area. How does that even work? Well, Waymo explains, they map out the city and they have computers on board controlling everything and making all the decisions to maneuver the vehicle. Waymo reports that its computers are loaded with maps, much more than just the Google Maps that I use to navigate. They add layer after layer after layer of information. Things like car lanes, bicycle lanes, turning zones, sidewalks, shoulders with, and without curbs, signs, crosswalks, fire hydrants, bus stops, driveways, obstacles, and well, you get the idea. A digital representation of everything related to driving is made. Not just the roads, but also objects on, around, and near the roads. That makes me think, with all these sensors on the vehicle, is the Waymo AI actively updating changing conditions with the cars driving as they move through places where new construction has happened? Hmm, I don't know, that's kind of interesting. So anyway, back to the video. This is all great, but what about abnormal situations like school speed zones or construction zones, maybe kids playing, someone on a bicycle, heavy traffic, a box on the road? You get the idea. Well, Waymo has to recognize and identify all these things just like a human driver would. And not just things that are mapped out, but also the ever-changing conditions. So what feeds the AI the ever-changing information to mesh in with the digital representation of the world? Well, it's all those sensors we just talked about. So with all those maps loaded into the computer system, it leads to the very natural question, what if the computer fails? We've all seen a computer crash or freeze. This could be a serious problem. Well, it turns out Waymo has a secondary computer on board that's always running in the background to take over if the primary computer fails. And that's not all. In addition to the backup computer, there are redundant systems for everything. Collision avoidance, steering systems, braking systems, power systems, motion detection and positioning systems, cyber security systems. With all that, it's no wonder that Waymo does not allow you to sit in the driver's seat. And the steering wheel clearly says to keep your hands off the wheel something your driver's ed teacher would never have told you. With all that technology, it's no surprise that the vehicles look a bit funny. While the outside is different looking, the inside is luxurious and looks like every other Jaguar I ride in. Well, actually, I don't know the last time I rode in a Jaguar. 
but they look very nice with the leather seats, all sorts of creature comfort, tinted windows, full control over the heating, air conditioning, and radio. Not a surprise considering the Waymo driver vehicle is built on the platform of the fully electric luxury Jaguar I-Pace. This is some pretty amazing technology, like something right out of the future. But the real question is, do you want to go for a ride in one of these Waymos? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm a little old. Um... Sure. To me, this feels like something right out of the future, something I would have watched on Star Trek or Star Wars when I was a kid, and I'm excited to keep learning about it. To ride along with me in this journey, please subscribe, and we'll learn even more about AI-controlled vehicles.